So Drew Sample of the Sample Hour, welcome to School Sucks Podcast. How are you tonight, sir? Uh, you know, I'm blown away that I'm uh, on your show, man. It's uh, it's a cool, cool thing to be a part of it. So I appreciate you inviting me on to uh, teach me something today. Also, it's worth pointing out that behind the scenes, you and I participate in a mastermind group together. So we've been talking every week for the last several months about our various projects and our goals for those projects. And um, recently, you were talking a little bit about pulling everything together. I wanted to start today just by w what we're going to be doing is basically a tutorial on how I set up and use Evernote. But I thought maybe I could throw it to you and you could try to articulate the problem or problems that you're, you're looking to solve in your organizational and productive life. Absolutely. So I do a bunch of things. Like I'm involved in so many different things. You know, I, I have my golden handcuffs. I have a pretty good job. I work there full time, but I'm not really happy there and I don't really find fulfillment, but it's, it's a good, you know, nine to five or nine to six, Monday through Friday. And I have all this different stuff that I do and not all of it is, is necessarily in line with one another. So the first entrepreneurial thing that I really started doing was, um, you know, these comedy show promotions. So we'll do comedy show promotions. And it, it's not it's not a lot of stuff, but a lot of times, you know, making sure I'm promoting and, and keeping track of those tasks is that's that's one set of things I have to do. Then the other thing that I'm really trying to do, which I'm really passionate about is um, is, you know, really start to build like a nice, you know, urban agriculture business. And and I think for me with that, there's all these tasks to do. And I feel good because I feel like I get a lot of them done. But it's like it's I have to really focus on it to do. And one problem that, you know, I actually discussed, which was like kind of my pain point, was that I really struggle. Like I I've always been gifted of having a really good memory and I always rely on my memory. And something that you pointed out to me was, you know, your brain is used should be used for for processing power a lot of times, not necessarily just storage. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's something that I, I run into because I'm. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, trying to, to, to figure out what plants I'm going to do, how I'm going to, you know, network with other people with urban agriculture. And then also what's the next comedy show we're going to book and all this other stuff. And I don't and I and I don't think I'm very effective if, at allocating my time appropriately like the way I really could. And I feel like I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job, but I know that I could do way better. And one thing that I said was. I've heard so many people say use Evernote and it's been installed on my phone for probably over a year, but I just don't use it. And like, I'll start to, to, to mess with it. And then I get overwhelmed. I'm like, you know what? I could just, just write something down. And usually if I write something down or write some, some sheets, I could do that. But then I, then I'll think about if I'm sitting somewhere and I'm like, Oh, I, I need to do something. I, I usually don't have a notebook on me. Like I don't like carrying stuff around with me except for like my phone keys and wallet. So that's that's kind of like my predicament. And so you are kind enough to invite me on the show to actually teach me how to use Evernote. I And I just uh, on what you said before, uh, I stole that from David Allen. Your mind is for having ideas and, and not for holding them. But the, the RAM analogy works here as well. Uh, I've used it in other ways in the past. But you have to really ask yourself, and I guess everybody's different. I know I certainly wouldn't do very well with trying to generate new, creative, productive ideas if, again, returning to my mind as a computer, I had a bunch of stuff running in the background. You know, I always found those things really distracting. When we did productivity shows before in 2013 on School Sucks, I talked about it kind of like a swarm of bees around me. All of these little things that needed to be uh, addressed, not being addressed, produced a real discomfort. And I even concluded at the time that it was causing a fair amount of stress and anxiety for my li in my life. So when I came across the getting things done method of productivity in 2013, I was very, very lucky. I'd heard about Evernote before, uh, but I was very, very lucky to actually come across Evernote around the same time and realizing that it synced up pretty much perfectly. Now, of course, all of these things, whether we're talking about getting things done or some other method of productivity or Evernote 
or some other program to support a method of productivity, they're all highly customizable. So I'm going to talk about the way that I use it. But, you know, I looked at, uh, there's actually this website, it's called The Secret Weapon, and it basically shows how to use Evernote and your email client to implement GD, GTD, uh, getting things done in your life. And then the guy shows what his Evernote looks like, and it looks nothing like mine. He's using it completely differently. But I said, oh, okay, that actually makes sense too. And all of our work lives or our creative lives are very different. So it's not going to look the same for any two people. And really, with something like getting things done, it might just be a handful of really, really valuable takeaways that could have a significant positive uh, change in a person's life. And that was the case for me. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys last night, uh, when I first implemented both getting things done and Evernote, it was really to try to get control and organize all of the, the clutter that I was dealing with. So, I mean, back to Evernote, initially, download the program on every device you have. So let's do a quick device inventory. What, what do you have your hands on every day as far as electronics are concerned? So I have my iPhone. Mm -hmm. I have an iPad that I sometimes use, my MacBook, and my work computer. I would say at work, and I could, because I saw it, Evernote has a web interface too that you can use. And so I figure I could probably pull it up on there as well. Well, that's, that is really the biggest selling point of Evernote is that you can install it on every device you have and you just make an account with your email and it will sync what you did in Evernote to every device. So, you know, if you're at the supermarket and you only have your phone, if you're sitting in front of your computer and you make changes, as soon as Evernote syncs, it's all cloud storage. As soon as it syncs, all of that information that you added wherever you are is now on every device that you have. So in that respect, it's superior to something like a dry erase board, which is awesome, but it's not with you at the supermarket or even, you know, a little notebook. But that not, might not always be with you either. But we live in a day when we pretty much always have a device nearby. And at the time I started using Evernote, I had a iPod Touch and I installed it on that. I had some kind of Android phone, I don't remember. And I had a laptop computer and a desktop computer. And it was, you know, a cross between Windows stuff and Mac stuff. iPad, Android phone, Windows laptop, uh, Mac desktop. And it was on all four devices. And it's always current just, you know, with the click of a button that says sync. So that is a, a super handy feature. And I noticed, too, with Evernote, something that I was looking at now, I see that there's different versions that you can have for your account so there's basic plus premium do you do you subscribe like do you recommend you get the pay one i did. i almost did today i've i've used the free version since i first started using it in 2013 and in preparation for this conversation tonight i was looking over my system and looking for ways to improve it because i have gotten pretty comfortable with what i'm doing and i actually did make a few changes today that we'll probably talk about uh based on a, a recent conversation that i had with jake DeSillis, which people will have heard uh by the time they hear this conversation but so i did i did make a few changes today but i was sitting there and i was thinking okay what else do i need this program to be able to do um, if you get a paid version, it's a little bit easier to integrate email into Evernote. You can basically just forward uh, emails into your Evernote inbox. So you're putting everything you have to do into one uh, collection location, which is really the first step in, in getting things done, is to collect all your stuff so you can identify it and then decide what you need to do with it. Just labeling things. You know, it's a very, very chaotic world if you don't know what's going on around you. So just being able to gather everything up and label it is a very, very important step that Evernote makes very easy, whether it's, you know, uh, you take a picture of something or you want to grab something off the web or you want to do just a, a handwritten scribble note uh, using your finger on your phone or if you actually want to want to type something or if you want to record audio, it can all wind up in the Evernote inbox. It works with all of those different formats. So it's, it's really useful in that respect, too. So the first thing that I recommend is go to the Evernote website or the, uh, the App Store or the Google Play Store and download it for every device you have. 
And on your computer especially, there's also another extension called Evernote Web Clipper. And this is super, super handy. I just actually made another great discovery today. Anytime I'm on a web, you know when you get a whole bunch of tabs open? Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, and that's really disorienting and it really can be very distracting to me sometimes. So the way that I actually solve that problem is if I have a tab open, why do we leave tabs open? Because we say, oh, I need this. I, I need this thing in the future. I need to remember this. Well, why would I remember it by, you know, leaving it open in Firefox? You just click this little Evernote link. It says, you want to keep this thing, huh? Where do you want to put it? And then you can put it into a place in Evernote, into a context where there's other similar things, which is really, really handy when you're trying to plan like a complex show or you're doing research for something, or even if you're just like, you know, looking for apartments or thinking about buying a new car. Uh, I realized today that you can actually just take screenshots. So I was going this long route like there's i need images a lot for show notes and for um featured images for podcasts and i would download the image and then it would be on the desktop of my computer which is another disaster zone uh in fact people who I, the screen is recording my desk the screen recorder is recording my desktop right now so people can see that it's it's not uh super organized and there's a bunch of screenshots on there um but downloading images I realized today that I can just screenshot what I want and it sends it right to the inbox. So it's a it's a really, really handy feature. I'm thinking there's a way to do it on a mobile phone or on a, a Mac device, but uh, I haven't used a, a Mac in a while, so I'm not sure. So that's that's basically the starter kit, Evernote Web Clipper and the Evernote program on every device uh, that you have. Is there any questions so far? Yeah, so is the Web Clipper, is it just something that you install in your um, web browser? Yeah, it's, it's just, just a like Firefox a... extension or a Google Chrome extension. Okay, very cool. I got yeah. that. So, I mean, I have, if I look at my Evernote, it says that right now I'm storing almost 1,500 notes in here, or between 14 and 1,500 notes. I would say that probably five or 600 are saved web pages. And, and the other cool thing, we'll see this in a minute, but it actually will show you the web page in web page format. It won't just copy it as text. Now, as far as getting things done is concerned, we talked about this a little bit last night and you saw an infographic of the whole system. And I didn't really think for an introduction that was particularly useful. It looked a little bit overwhelming to me, but I don't know if you had a chance to look into what that method uh, is anymore. If not, I can, I can certainly explain it pretty quickly. Yeah, let's explain it really quickly. So what it is, is it says the GTD workflow map, and it talks about like life's random inputs, and then just, it's basically, it's pretty much your own net that you create so you can catch and store things. Yep. So you did shows on the sample hour on the Trivium, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you do them with Gino Denning? Yeah. Gene and I, we talked about the uh, art of living more specifically because he'd done so many shows about the trivium so it it still like was the same idea but it was just a little bit different did you guys ever use another computer analogy shorthand input process output so daryl and i did when i had daryl on that's what daryl that was the best way i'd heard it before so the way daryl daryl becker actually described it with input process output you know the, the efficiency of a computer going towards critical thinking and getting things done really follows those same three steps, even though the getting things done process is simply five steps. The first one is to collect everything, like I already talked about, process it, which is basically what is it and where does it need to go? And then actually that covers the third step too: organize it, review it, which we're going to talk about. And there's, you know, periodic review. I try to review the whole system about once a week and, and see what's in my inbox. Sometimes my inbox can get a little crowded. That's the collection station is the inbox. And then the fifth step, obviously, is to do. So in the input process output, collect is the input, process, organize, and review is the second part, process, and the do is the output. So it's those five steps and, you know, what David Allen points out is people always talk like they have to do projects, which is overwhelming in itself. I mean, all you can really do is individual actions, right? So everything needs to be collected. 
most of the things you collect, you'll probably find they are part of something bigger. And then once you have a concrete picture of the bigger thing, you can say, all right, well, what are the steps I need to execute to take this to a desired objective, which you would also identify. So the benefit of, of incorporating Evernote with getting things done is it really enables you to have both a horizontal view of your life. These are all the aspects of my life that I'm trying to manage. And it sounds like from what you said, Drew, you have quite a few. You do these comedy shows, right? But you also do the sample hour. You also have a job and you also have your microgreens business. And you probably have a whole bunch of personal pursuits that are important to you as well. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I'm trying to, it, I feel like I, I'm building a house of cards that could crumble at any time because I don't know I keep pulling stuff off. Yeah, that's a stressful feeling. I, I knew exactly, it, for me, it was always, every time I, I relaxed, it would be like, I'm relaxed right now because I'm overlooking something. And that yeah. is, a, is an uncomfortable, nagging kind of feeling. So that's the horizontal, the across uh, view of life, all these things that need to be uh, addressed. But the vertical view is like, what are the elements of each thing? So let's pick one. Let's pick the the comedy shows that you, uh, that, what do you be, organize and promote them basically, right? Yeah, we'll book comics. Uh, we don't do a lot of them. We might do more. I think we're kind of deciding if whether or not me and my partner, we're going to, we're going to do more. I would like to keep doing comedy shows, but um, I think it's, like I said, I, I feel like the reason why I feel overwhelmed and I feel like I spin my tires is because I don't feel like I have, yeah, I don't have a system in place to really say, okay, comedy shows, let's, let's just, this is what I need to get done. Right. By the way, I'm going to just drag, I didn't, I didn't want to drag this in too soon because I didn't want it to be distracting. No, you're all good. But... This is what my Evernote looks like. So we were talking about a uh, horizontal view, which for me would be things like current projects, current projects on hold, overarching uh, school sucks project stuff, and then personal pursuits. So now every single one of these can be expanded, but I'm going to keep them all closed up for now. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the comedy show booking. And just to illustrate the vertical of that, what are... The elements of that basically okay so the elements would be doing research to find different venues mm -hmm. figuring out what comics to probably book next if we're going to book more comics then i think ultimately making sure i think for so art to promote the shows who are artists that we can rely on to to make different uh posters so different advertising posters uh other things i need to look into more are how can I promote this? Sh how, how can I become a better promoter? So what are some different things that I could maybe advertise in or on the marketing side of the business? So I, I think that's just kind of four basic things. Or those are four things that, that are kind of uh, verticals that you could, you could definitely go deeper in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, and there's vertical to your vertical probably as well. And the frustrating thing about having a very multifaceted knowledge work or creative work kind of life is you might have to change from one one thing way down in the vertical of one aspect of your life to something completely different very quickly. And that can be frustrating and disorienting. So uh, I think that being able to identify those things, so you basically have a map of your entire I was going to say your entire work life, but for me, it's really my my entire life. Like everything yeah. is is in here, is is very useful. So uh, Evernote is very good for being able to see the vertical and the horizontal, but also being able to see it from different uh, angles as well. And I'll explain what I mean in a bit. But uh, do you want to get into this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's get into it because I I have my Evernote pulled on my phone, and I'm trying to look at because you have notes and then you have notebooks tags and I'm kind of look at so how I could kind of structure mine to really start uh, making it productive for me. Right. So I would say that the easiest interface to set it up would be a computer. Um, okay. I, I, I use it on my phone. I thought the Mac version of Evernote was, was pretty sleek. The Android phone version is definitely a second choice 
to working with it on the computer. So you would set up a new notebook just by going to file, new notebook, and then clicking new notebook. And we could name it uh, Drew. Yeah. And then you'll see it appear at the bottom here. Okay. But this notebook just exists by itself. So if you see if I open up just like Essential SSP, this is like a hierarchy. And then within Essential SSP, there's Growing SSP, Guests for New Mission, SSP Financial Marketing, Surveys, Vision and Mission, and Volunteers. So those are all notebooks too. So this thing that says Essential SSP mm -hmm. is called a notebook stack, right? Now inside every notebook, there can be a series of notes, right? So yeah. all of these are different individual notes. And this is really just a way of, you know, grouping a bunch of related things together. And they're all like highly formatable and you can add pictures to them. These are actually screenshots in this one um, that all have to do with making the show more successful, both in, in reach and uh, financially as well. So if I want to create a notebook stack, we just created this notebook called Drew. So I right click on it and there is an option called add to stack. And if I don't want to add it to one of my existing stacks, I just click new stack and it'll say notebook stack and then Drew is nested under there. So I can name this notebook stack Super Drew. <laughs> Super Drew. That would be the creation process. And then I can nest as many notebooks, each of them filled with as many notes as I want under that notebook stack. So I'll delete that for now. So we're just looking at mine. And this is basically how mine has been organized. Um, for the last few months, uh, I've been making some gradual changes. But for the most part, this is how I've, I've run with it since I started using the program. So one of the, the, the most important notebook stacks is the inbox. And this deals with the collect process of getting things done. So these are just the things that have been shoved in here today or yesterday, right? So there's a note about the hero, an infographic about the hero's journey, uh, the Joseph Campbell summation of a bunch of stories. This is just a screen grab that I didn't ever note. This is a, an article about alternatives to a program called OmniFocus. OmniFocus is a Mac program. I don't use a Mac anymore. Uh, this is notes for us that should have been put into a project, but I realized uh, I had a lot of handwritten notes I was gonna use for this show since we were sharing screens and I didn't wanna have to keep jumping back to this note. Uh, this is a movie a listener asked me to watch. Uh, this is an article that I wanted to read. Uh, Star Wars films are not about good versus evil, they're about bad parenting. So the first thing to do gather everything I need into in. And this just happens all day. I get an email. I copy that if I don't, if I'm not going to be dealing with emails or if it's more than two minutes uh, to do a task, it's going to go into my inbox. Uh, part of getting things done, there's something called the two minute rule. If anything comes across, you know, your desk and it's two minutes or less to do, just do it. Don't let those things build up because they become that swarm of bees that I talked about, or they can become that swarm of bees if you don't have a system. It's kind of like laundry for me. Yes. It sounds funny, but like for me, like I just really started getting like a system to folding laundry and I've always been like a total child about it my whole adult <laughs> life. Yeah. So these are things that I want to essentially put away. I don't want this. I never want to not be able to see white down here, right? Yeah. If I can't see white, it means there's, there's running. I mean, I can just show you an example of what that would look like. All right. See, there's no white in current projects. There's lots of stuff in there. Now, they're all yeah. divided between these four projects that we'll get to in a minute. But when I have things in in, I want to go from collect to process, where I can ask myself questions about each item. Well, first of all, what is it? Why is it here? Uh, the hero's journey, this actually had something to do with uh, a project that I'm working on for uh, an email list. So that's going to get taken into this project folder called autoresponder. So I just take that and put it there and it's out of in. Alternatives to OmniFocus is something that relates to the productivity series. 
because that was where I first heard about it in a conversation that I had in a recent podcast. And it's something that I might want to report to the audience on, or maybe not, depending on what I find. So that goes into productivity. And you'll see there's four current projects here. That means that I am currently working on all these things. This autoresponder is an ongoing project. This uh, February, the principles of learning anything. That's the our podcast theme for February. So that is upcoming. Um, January productivity, that is overarching, which means that there are uh, a variety of sub-projects represented by these notes. And then upcoming is also a self-employment course that I'm going to be working on this winter into the spring. So all of these things probably have a place within projects. Some of them might not. This is you, so I'm just going to put that in the productivity folder. You know, the other thing, too, that I would be asking myself is, are these things actionable, right? So let's just say this Star Wars article, I could probably read that before I go to bed tonight. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to do copy note link. And then I'm going to take it to next actions. And this is my to do list or basically my plan for today. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a checkbox and paste the link to that note. So before I go to bed tonight, ideally I wanna have all of these things done. We're doing this one right now. And uh, I could probably crank that article out. So from there, I can get it out of in and I can save it in a folder called things done, which means I am gonna deal with it nice. before I go to bed. Now these other two, this movie screening thing, I do have something called incubation, right? So incubation, things that are not current projects and they're not really current on hold and I don't really necessarily have a plan for them right now. And one of the items in incubation, it just means it's been put off for later. People are always sending me emails and maybe this happens to you watch this video, listen to this podcast. And, you know, I really, really appreciate their suggestions. But if 100 people do that, you want to tell the 101st person to shut up and go away, you know, because it can be overwhelming. So I wanted to have a footing where I could welcome any suggestion that anybody had. And you see it's gotten a little crowded. There's 31 items in it. It's called Media Consumption Queue. And the only reason I haven't dragged this video the vitamin, that vitamin movie into that is I'm worried if I put it in media consumption queue, it gets buried in this incubation folder. And I know enough about my system to know that I'm not checking that media consumption queue more than once a week. Like when I sit down to maybe eat a meal at the table, I'll open media consumption queue. I'll see what I can watch in there. You know, if something's like a half hour or whatever, but for right now, because I told the listener I would watch the, that vitamin movie, I'm just going to leave it in inbox. So now I've got my inbox down to one thing that I'm planning to deal with very soon. And whether it's a website, a picture I take, an email I need to deal with, or just a thought that I have, it is all captured right here in inbox to start with. And I just went through basically the second and third steps of getting things done, which would be uh, processing and organizing right? Identifying what it is and deciding where it needs to go. Yeah. But then I want to talk uh, a little bit more about how I used, uh, use Evernote. So a lot of these folders, these notebook stacks are expandable and we've already seen what's in a couple of them. So I want to do this one first, next actions. Um, every day when I get up in the morning, I make a list of what is going to happen that day, ideally, or everything that I want to happen that day. So I copy and paste a morning routine that includes every single thing that I do in the morning. Um, wake up, make my bed. That's, an, that's actually, Tim Ferriss told me about that. And I didn't even, couldn't even think when I heard it. I was driving and I was listening to his podcast about his morning routine. I was like, do I even make my bed? I hope I do. I'm 38. <laughs> but I couldn't even, I like, maybe I just like kind of make it look not awful, but I get up in the morning now and I make my bed like a hotel maid makes a bed in a hotel room. First thing I do. And then I make coffee. I try to do some meditation or some light yoga or both. 
I write in a journal for about five minutes. I check my calendar. Uh, from things on the calendar, I create a task list, which is the next item. And that's what you see below here. And usually when I start, I just write a little blurb like work. Today I am prepping for my show with Drew. I also need to be thinking of ahead to releasing episode 403 with Jake. Personal. I have bills to pay and I need to talk to the place I live about my lease agreement. I have scheduled commitments at 4 p.m. I was a meeting with a volunteer and 7.30 p.m. So just based on writing that out and checking my calendar, I generate a list of things that need to be done that day. Meeting with Ryan at 4, Evernote tutorial at 7.30, go to the gym, pay electric bill, process emails, edit the show with Jake, uh, post the last show with Nathan to YouTube, uh, move some money around, prep for this meeting with you, email a guy, uh, talk to the property management company at the place I live, and now read this Star Wars article, which is manageable. And you can see yeah. I still have a few things that need to be taken care of, uh, yeah. and hopefully they will before I go to bed. Now, every day I generate one of these lists, and at the beginning of a new week, I just skim back through my old lists. I really ate shit in my morning routine on this day. <laughs> um, I just skim back through to see if there's anything left undone that needs to be done. And if I'm pretty satisfied with the completion of those lists, I just copy them all and I will drag them to completed daily action lists. And in here, I have, you know, basically to-do lists, journals of what I did every day. Oh my goodness. The first one was my birthday in 2014. Hmm. Good job. You did a good job on that one. Yep. Oh, there's a couple things I didn't do, but whatever. You know, and see, they used to be much simpler. I mean, if you look at these old ones, it was just a list. As uh, the system developed, I you know changed the way I did it. And I'm actually going to be talking to a guy soon who's going to tell me that to-do lists suck and successful people don't use them. So I've even um, basically changed what a to-do list means by trying to, as much as I can, use something called the Pomodoro technique, it's where you time your work. Yeah. So in the morning, after I, you know, have done all the things I need to get to my desk, I do three 25-minute sessions, which I call first work block. And I'm going to ask the guy, like, well, if I'm timing my work, because he said one of the problems is you don't, to-do lists don't account for time, but I think I have a system where they do a little bit. So yeah. After I've worked for basically an hour and a half, I'll eat breakfast and then I try to go for a walk, which I did not do today because it's freezing here. Yeah, it's really cold outside. That's a good, that was a good call. Yeah. So uh, then there's one called this week, which is just like, you know, things that happen every week. So uh, I don't really use that much. It's just a picture I took of my morning routine. But that's in and that's next actions. So I showed you with you know, just some thing that winds up in my to-do list, like, hey, uh, I'm interested in reading this article. Here's that article, but it exists as an item on my to-do list. And when I click it, it just links to the Evernote note. So all of my to-dos could just link to Evernote notes and open them if I wanted them to. But some of them, like, pay electric bill or go to the gym, that's not possible. But yeah. some days it could be different. So that's the, the first two sections, the inbox and the next actions. But most next actions, as I'm trying to basically plan my day, come from reviewing current projects. And this, I have to say, is a place where I really haven't nailed things down yet. So this month of January, we're doing productivity all month. So there are a bunch of web clippings in here. But there are also like specific um, procedures. So when I took the show into this kind of next phase of production, this is basically a note that shows me the process for everything from pre-production to promoting a show on Twitter or Facebook that needs to happen. So it's just a step-by-step -step checklist, right? So pre-production is, uh, you know, Pre preliminary research on guest and topics, schedule the guests, do further research, gather articles, write an outline, determine how the topic fits the monthly theme, determine the timing of the topic within the theme to decide what number show it will be. 
production, you know how all that works. Um, so that's just the seven steps of production. And then post-production, things like editing the spoken audio, finding bumper music, finding sound effects. And and one of the efficient time savers is I don't I never really mastered how to have everything on my computer in a place where I can just immediately find it, especially if you have a folder of audio files and they all have the exact same icon. And even if they had different icons, it wouldn't make it any clearer. Uh, so everything that I need to do the production is basically just stored either as files or shortcuts in this um, Evernote note right as part of the checklist so when it's time to add the bell to the show the bell file is right there the new subscriber geography trivia new theme is right there so i don't have to go digging for those things and i, I know if you like use things over and over again and it's even a waste of time like in in we're recording in um audacity so i'm going to pull that in for a minute right when i want to yeah. add do you use audacity no, I don't. I use uh, GarageBand and my Zoom. I need I need to learn it to teach uh, my friend though how to how to edit his own podcast. Yeah, because he doesn't have an Apple. It's real easy to use if you're not an idiot, which uh, I can be sometimes about where I put things. So uh, you know, we're just recording audio, but eventually I'm going to want to add music. I'm going to want to add the the um, opening intro. I'm going to want to add the bell, and to do that, I go to import, and then I have to find all those things. Right. But yeah. not anymore. They're all right here. So I know where they are. And then when it goes into things like podcast posting, uh, I have a link to the upload. So it'll just I click this link and it will open the this might take a minute because we're really asking a lot of the computer right now. <laughs> but um, it'll open it, up the automatic link. It will open up the page where the podcast it's, it's going to do it slowly, but it will open up the page where the podcast gets uploaded. So when it comes to that step in the checklist, I can be right there with just one click. All right. There we go. And then these files here, I'm really going to be taxing it right now for streamlining the process of like creating the art for the show. This is just a, a shortcut to a Photoshop file that will open. And then when it goes from like episode 402 to 403, I just have to update the art, save it to the desktop, and then upload that new art. So this is going to load something. Yeah, that just the the art for the last two shows with Nathan. And when I post the next show with Jake, I'm probably just going to change you know what the topic is uh, in this Photoshop file. But I know right where it is, so it's it's really easy to find because we all know what it's like to have a you know a desktop. First of all, we all know what it's like to have so many things open, but then like just all these Photoshops, right? So I have one yeah. called interview YouTube to site. I don't even remember what that means anymore. Featured image. That could be anything. Uh, conspirathon art. That's like six, five months old. Uh, Gatto titles. But so, so this is a repetitive project within the overarching project of January uh, productivity month, basically. But then like... Uh, there's a record and release schedule, right? So everything that's happening is just here in this table with a record date, the guest, the topic, and the release date. And the things highlighted in yellow are what's done so far. So we're at, you know, uh, one... Is today the 11th? I thought it was the 10th. Today is the 11th. Oh, yeah. All day I thought it was the 10th, but you're right, it's the 11th. Drew Sample, topic Evernote, and the release date is to be determined. The next show will be released, not the 12th, but the 13th. So how do you custom, I mean, so, but I mean, so looking at this, I mean, so there are different ways where you can create your, I mean, so that note, is that a screenshot of something or is that something you built in Evernote? I just built it in Evernote uh, and the way I did it was, let's, let's go back to the inbox and just, what do you want to capture? You want to, you hit control new and it okay. will generate a new note. Um, okay. And then I want to call this note table. And I want to make a table. So I click the table icon. I determine the table size. We'll say seven by four, and it just generates the table for me. Oh, okay. So it's just like a little Excel sort of thing in there. Yep. Yeah. So, or, or a table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly a table. So what you yeah. saw 
uh where was that record and release schedule uh was just a was just that a table that i generated their tables are a little clunky compared to like what you would do in um excel but they they get the job done for certain things but you know i could also just have uh, an excel file linked if i wanted to you know and yeah. just click i can click it right in evernote i never have to go back to my desktop if i don't want to or digging around in other folders as you saw with um the production flow, everything that I would need to either open, um, be it a file or a website, and this is, includes the Podomatic uploader, but also the uh, the School Sucks Project new post, like when I want to add a new post to the website in WordPress. Yeah. It'll just open the um, fields to do that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So if I was, so for me with the podcast, I could just have a link to um, my podcast blast off login yep. and then just go in and edit. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, even if you, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's convenient to have uh, favorites and those little, uh, what's that called? Yeah. Favorites, how you can have the little icons across the top of your browser. Yeah. But this is still changing back and forth. I mean, this is a step-by-step -step process, and everything in that process is just right here, which I prefer. Well, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't mean more efficiency, Drew, like maybe this saves seven minutes each time I do a podcast. The feeling of knowing that I know where everything I need is is very relaxing for me. So that's an added benefit. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. No, no, no. That makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think well, it, it's like a mental, it's basically you can put your brain on paper, but digitally right in front of you and organize your thoughts just right at your fingertips. It's pretty awesome. I think the more overwhelming thing for me right now, or maybe even a new user is when am I going to get to how bread is with it? But, and I think for me, I, I probably won't, like I probably won't, I'll probably end up using it my own way or using it, but as long as because I might not want as much structure. And I think a, the average user might not want as much structure. But I think that it's, it's, it's definitely a great, if that makes sense. Because like you just said, like, I need to, I, I need to have it like this because it, it makes me feel, it makes it so I can relax more. So I think if people take it to the level where it allows them to relax and stay focused, um, I think that's, that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah, that was really the biggest dividends paid for me. And even when we did uh, the whole productivity series in 2013, I think I said at the end of it, yeah, I don't know if I'm actually producing anything more uh, than I did before. I mean, I looked like I, I did look at 2014 and 2015. I made more videos, produced more podcasts, got more projects from being open to being closed than I had ever done before. So I definitely attributed it to that system. But for me, anxiety and stress are both big liabilities in my life. I don't do well with those things. And I would have been happy with the implementation of getting things done in Evernote, even if it produced no significant increases in productivity. If it just reduced stress by giving me a trusted system of organization, uh, that would have been enough, but it did wind up doing more than that. And I think this year it will uh, go to a next, uh, another level, really. Well, I think so. I think just even based on the way that you you went back and looked at some things and saw how your tasks went from being really simple to being more integrated. But I even think so for me personally, like I can get shit done because I will just get tunnel vision on something. I'll just do something until I kind of burn myself out versus with, with this, it's like, I can just be like, all right, I don't really feel like doing that. What are my tasks that I've already created for this project? Instead of me not having my notebook, me having to maybe generate a new list or think of things differently. If I have a thought that comes in my head, I can immediately go to the appropriate tab or the appropriate uh, folder subfolder and, and enter that information in there mm -hmm. um, or you just put it in the catcher and then when you get a chance to sit down that distribute it is that is that typically the way you use this if that makes sense yeah i mean collect and capture so i'm just going back to in right now is yeah. the essential first step you know so just 
having that part done is a huge stress relief. It's like that. It's like that feeling of looking for something on the internet that you know you've seen before. Yeah, you know, adult video or otherwise, <laughs> and you say, "Gosh, I've seen it. I've seen it more than once." I, I forget. Usually, with for me, it's quotes. Um, I remember yeah. that feeling of like. I did a show in 2010 and now it's 2012. That thing still must be on the internet. That sucked. Um, I be, use this program to capture everything that I ever think I could ever need now in, in one form or another. And we're going to uh, look at that in a little bit. So like the horizontal view of my life, as I said, is covered in current projects, which I showed you, uh, current projects on hold, the essential SSP stuff. So this is these are things that I'm always into, like codes for, you know, adding uh, here's how you support us stuff to the show notes, uh, income tracking. Uh, this is my resume. I don't know why that's there. Oh, because it got posted to the website. Um, and then like codes for Bitcoin. So this is this is really just more of a reference file. Yeah. Um, surveys. We conducted a bunch of surveys. So, you know, these are all the individual surveys. Yeah, this is just like a storage file or a reference file. Um, so really projects only take shape as projects, like that note that I showed you of the uh, production flow. Yeah. They only take shape in current projects. These other categories, current on hold, essential SSP, and even personal pursuits, are just categorical uh, storage files, right? So everything about uh, diet is here, things I wanted to look into, habits I wanted to change, any kind of exercise stuff, um, random ideas. Oh, this is probably scary. <laughs> just random ideas <laughs> that I write down. Or if it's an idea in the form of something that I see on like uh, Reddit or Imager, like save that motherfucking money. Right. Which is just basically an infographic about how to save money. I said, yeah. why not? Why? If I can save that forever, why wouldn't I? So if you have, let's say you and I are having a conversation about I found this really interesting thread about how to save money and you wanted to share that with me. And I also have Evernote. Is that another function you could use to, to share that with me? And then I could check out that thread as well. Mm, it's called work chat. That's OK. At the, it's at the top here. And you can just start chat and share notes and you can share notebooks like any, even one of these notebooks, you can go to export notes and it gives you options for sharing them or even like, let's say an individual note, like, let's say I want to share this movie with you. Yeah. Uh, I can either copy the note link, which actually, um, saves from the tab. Well, no, no, no. Actually, let me, let me I take that back. I go to share. Yeah. And I can copy the share URL, right? So yeah. then I just go to the chat in Skype with that copied link. And you have it too. But when you open it, it basically, Evernote will generate a web page that you can look at. Very cool. Kind of like Dropbox does with, um, if you want to, if I wanted to share you something from my drop, Dropbox, but not give you full access to my Dropbox, it, it does the same thing. Yep, I can actually, I could share a whole notebook with you too. So it links to that to that web page, but now stored in Evernote, which is obviously like, I mean, if we're sharing web pages, I would just send you the link to yeah, the web page. Yeah, absolutely. This was just an example. Yeah, but I could share, I could share just a note that I wrote, or even a more complex note. So we did a four-hour show at the end of last year on James Bond. So I'm just going to dig that up. Podcast Masters, Spectre. All right. So this pulls up all the notes that were used to create a four-hour podcast. And within that, there's a main outline, right? Um, the stuff highlighted in yellow is me highlighting it during the show as we covered it. And you'll see a bunch of URLs. And then you'll also see these green links. And these green links just link to other web pages or other Evernote notes that were probably generated by me writing or by me copying web pages. So all of this information is stored in one note and then all of the links that surround it. So you'll see like a lot of these say linked, 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 linked. Yeah. This is just my system of saying within the main outline for this show, this article is linked 
in that okay. outline. So the goal was to everything that I collected for this show gets processed and organized into a main outline. And once it's organized into this main outline somewhere, the it, I just changed the note title, which I can do just at the top right here. And whatever it said originally, I just add the word linked to it, which means that it's been now incorporated into the whole, hopefully, the structure of the show. But yeah. this notebook called Podcast Masters Spectre, which was the name of the James Bond movie, uh, I can share the whole notebook with people via email. Now, I, I did want to say we're, we're kind of um, deep down into this right now. I yeah. compacted this left column, which basically yeah. is the navigation, and then yeah. it goes to all the notes within that particular space in the navigation you're in, and then over here in this window, it's all the individual notes. So when I'm using Evernote, it usually looks like this. I usually don't have all of the um, notebook stacks folded up. Yeah. I usually have them all open. Uh, okay. Actually, no, incubation would usually be closed. Um, reference would usually be closed. Things done would usually be closed. And concept topic reference would usually be closed. So but, things that you're actively using, you, you, you keep open. So yeah, for workflow sort of deal. Current on and, hold would be closed, yeah. So when you do most organizing, you do it from a, from your from your PC, but you yeah. do most your capturing from from. Do you do you do that from your phone or do you do that mainly from your PC as well? Because I think, yeah, a lot the, of capturing is done from the phone. Because like for a lot of people that are on the go, um, like me, like I'm on the go a lot, and if I'm, I think like well, I mean, I'm, I think I'll probably do a lot of capturing from my work computer from when I'm supposed to be working but it's in between calls or something. And, I, and I'm like, want to even look at things that I could research or something like that. Because a lot of times, it's like I, 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 I do this technique of talking to myself, like, you know, sample, focus. But it'd be way easier to be like, oh, let's go into Evernote, and what, what could I get done? Yeah, you, I mean, you shouldn't have to be shouting at yourself to focus. You should be yeah. relaxed, yeah. you know? You should be a- ready to uh have ideas as they come and you should be assured that everything you need is being kept someplace safe so how long did it take you to really build the infrastructure for the tabs on the left like how i mean when you first got started because clearly i mean this is after a few years of doing this like yeah. would it i mean so did would you recommend for somebody that's just getting started to just really like maybe do their projects and then start creating subfolders for their projects, focus on one project and get those subfolders done and do one at a time or just kind of really put in folders or just start just start capturing things and then create folders as you go. I know I said like five things there. At well, the no, no, it's interesting that you, you, it was good that you gave a lot of choices because it, it, that's, that's an interesting question. I mean, it, it might actually make sense just as people are getting their feet wet with it to start seeing what you need to capture. I mean, maybe spend like three or four days experimenting. What do you capture off the web? What do you capture off your phone? What are you writing notes about? And when you maybe generate 20 notes, maybe the only notebook you set up is an inbox. After three or four days, look what's in it. And you probably have some, you know, fair idea of how your life needs to be structured. Now, if I had known more when I first set this up, I would definitely have an inbox. I would definitely have a notebook stack called current projects. I would have something called reference, which is things that I want to save, but maybe don't know why I'm saving them or how they're going to be used. I mean, if you look at my reference, it's like, pop that open i really hope you guys are using the youtube video of this because this is uh i think audio wise it's gonna be it's gonna i think it's good to get people interested in evernote but i think like the benefit of actually seeing your evernote is going to be a key thing here because i think because even if you don't want to do it the way brett does it it's just good to have the idea i think just use it as a template and like you use that reference of that website as well which i'm going to look at as well but i think that the capture part, I think, is going to be huge for me, especially just with what do I need to get done or if I'm driving and I think of something, take the audio note. Is, do you use the audio notes a lot? Like uh, I've you- used it before. Uh, I don't know if I can really show it to you on the computer, but it's very easy to use on a phone. Well, I was looking at it and it looks like it's just a note and then there's a little microphone. Mm-hmm. And I think that's it. So, And I think for for the mobile version, I think if if people... 
if you're looking at that and you want to do a new note, just just click notes. I didn't. So the notebook thing. So when I was when in preparation for this, I've stared at Evernote at my computer and uh, really had no idea. I just was like, well, there's notes, but I don't see how how Brett has this stuff organized. But now it makes way more sense. Well, yeah, there's there's this way of doing it where I would just have in. Uh, projects, uh, reference, and then something like someday maybe, which I call incubation, which is just things that are put off for the future. Reference are more like things that I would go back to and check. So like here's a reference folder. It's called AV Technical Equipment. And it's just like, oh, I remember I saw a YouTube video that was helpful once on this, and now I just have to find it again. Well, I just yeah. want it right here. And this could even probably have... Um, a bit of a, a nested structure as well based on categories. But like, you know, how do I use my LG phone? Uh, how do I write code for, for something? Uh, yeah. How can I make my nasally voice sound better in Audacity? So this is just like a, a technical how-to folder. Uh, job materials where I would keep um, cover letter, my resume. Or two of the best things about the way I have mine set up is I have a notebook stack called Things Done, which is basically a record of everything I've done <laughs> since <laughs> I started using Evernote. And then there's a section here called Actions, which is just like really small individual things. Like on Christmas, I put out nine shows, so I just had this note to basically catalog all of that. Uh, does a satanic cult rule the world? Uh, <laughs> I might need to revisit that. But I mean, you can go all the way. These are all organized by the last time I made an edit. So, and then the last one is concept topic reference. And this is really handy, especially if you're revisiting topics a lot in like a podcast format where you often yeah. have to think on your feet. So if someone says, Brett, do you remember when you did the series with Gino Denning? And I say, yes, because I made a reference folder for that called Trivium Reference. And you were talking about rhetoric. Yes, I remember because I made a rhetoric note about it. And the term uh, sophist came up, and I can say, yes, wait, search, how do I search the note? Search current context. Sophist. Sophist. Yes, 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 I do remember that. And I was talking about Plato and how Plato disputes the sophistic notion that the art of persuasion, blah, blah, blah. Look how yeah. smart I am. It was all a trick. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, this is like uh, anything that was a major project that I knew would be revisited, the six pillars of self-esteem, the six thinking hats, 9-11-y type stuff, adverse childhood experiences, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, critical thinking, productivity. So that's how I, uh, that's how I do this. Uh, but there's one more thing that I could share with you, uh, and this would be maybe another way to set it up. Okay. Um, or these two ways could work together. And this is what we talked about um, when we were discussing this in the mastermind group, the, the use of tags to know contexts for like when you're doing certain things. Yeah. So an entirely different way to set up Evernote, and you can use both, but w what I've showed you here is done using notebooks and notebook stacks going to individual notes. The other way is with tags. So I'm expanding a tag menu that has contexts like what when where who and why that's kind of part of the trivium too right who what where when and why well yeah i mean and it's part of the identification right so it's part of yeah. the the processing and organizing of uh you know after you've collected things what are they where do they go what do they have to do with how did it, how do they work with other things so the first one here, what, are just like the areas of responsibility in my life. And I could organize things. I actually just added this today, and this is like another element of getting things done that I'm trying to embrace right now. Family, finances, diet and fitness, mental health, relationships, SSP audio production, SSP content planning, SSP marketing, SSP networking, SSP video production. And I'll probably expand on that. And then time context, things that need to be done daily, now, which could be today, next, which could be tomorrow or this week, soon, which could also be maybe called weekend, depending on how somebody wanted to customize this. Um, and someday we talked about like later or someday would be a kind of incubating things you want to save for later. Um, where can be really useful. 
right? So if you have a tag called at errands, mine is empty right now, you could, as you're making, uh, you know, things are coming into your inbox, it's something you need to do while you're out, you tag it at errands, which means that while you're out, you can click on that tag and it can show you everything you could do while you're out so you could make the most of that time. Yeah. Now, there's other things too, like uh, who tags, right? Because sometimes who is a very important context because uh, I really haven't used who tags too much except with my webmaster, Tony, who might say, remember that time we talked about this thing? And I would say, yeah, I do remember that. I think I have notes. But Tony and I talk about everything. So where the hell is this thing going to be up here in this in this setup, right? Is it going to be in our productivity conversation? Is it going to be in School Sucks Financial Marketing? Is it going to be in Things Done? Is it going to be in cop Concept Topic Reference? And, and maybe I could find it if I really know specifically what it's about, and I could probably find it by searching for it. But if Tony's right there, and I've tagged the, the note when I made it with his name, I can just click Tony, Webmaster, and he said, the decline of deep thinking. Yes, I have a note tagged. The decline of deep thinking. You see right there, Tony Webmaster is the tag. So based on the context of who, I can actually find out. And this would be really good if you manage a bunch of different people, right? Yeah. Because there's always those things where somebody says, oh, you remember I said this and then you told me to do this. Well, that would really never have to happen again because if it was like a, a partner or a subordinate, uh, you could have a tag with their name and basically a record of your interactions, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you, you could even you could even be tracking emails this way, whether you're importing emails by just forwarding them to Evernote, uh, which you need an, uh, to do an upgrade. Now, I used to be able to do it for free, and maybe I just ran out of my storage for that, but um, you have to have like a $24 a year version of Evernote to be able to do that. Otherwise, you just copy and paste emails like I do. Um, you could have, you know, all your conversations with somebody tagged with their name. And you could also link it to other contexts, right? Like why you were talking about that or what it had to do with. So you, when I was talking to Tony about audio production, really helps me narrow in on finding that note. Now, I'm going to start trying to use tags more in conjunction with this organizational structure. So I have basically two ways of finding things and two ways of organizing things. But for me so far, the, the notebook structure has been preferable to tags. But it was a recent conversation that I had with Jake DeSillis about areas of responsibility that actually led to me updating this today. So does, so does Jake say he just focuses on his areas of responsibility with tags or does he, cause he, what does he use? His, he uses, um, does he use Evernote or what does he, I, I've, I've heard it on his podcast. Yeah. Well, areas of responsibility is part of what, it, so, so getting things done has these two aspects to it. The organizational, the getting control of your life, but through getting control of your life, like I have hopefully demonstrated here, it also has freed up enough mental RAM for you to be able to gain perspective, right? To have more forward looking or to have more creative ideas. So David Allen calls this horizons of focus or the altitudes. So I'm actually pulling up a, can you see that okay? Yeah. Right? So this is just an infographic that I used in the show with Jake. Most people are stuck on the runway, right? Dealing with just their current actions. Yeah. And they don't really ever organize them into uh, efficiently. I mean, a lot of people probably do, um, but into current projects. And once you have your actions kind of gathered into projects and you observe what your projects are for a sufficient period of time, you can start to see what your areas of responsibility across your entire life, both professional and personal, are. So kind of evaluating, I try to review my system every week evaluating everything that I had here, I said, okay, well, if I was going to reorganize everything that's represented here into the what tag of areas of responsibility, what are mine? Well, it's family, it's finances, it's diet and fitness, mental health, relationships, audio production, content planning, marketing, networking, and video production. And I can, from knowing that, be able to make short-term, you know, one-year goals, based on those things. And maybe 
several of those goals accumulate into a three to five year vision. And this one we talked about purpose. That was, uh, that's a tricky one. Why am I on this earth? Um, is something that people can maybe start to come to understand once they've climbed to that altitude through these five previous steps. Yeah, I agree. So I wanted some mapping of that in Evernote, and I haven't really decided how I'm going to incorporate it yet, but I like the fact that it's there. And I mean, these could change, they could elaborate, um, new ones could be added, maybe some could be subtracted uh, or combined. But that's why that's there. So that's more of the perspective, right? The runway is clear by having a reliable system of capturing, processing, organizing, and doing all of the smaller things in life that lead to the completion of projects, that lead to the achievement of goals. And once that runway is cleared, we can essentially take off to be able to see the world from, uh, or see our lives basically, uh, and map our lives from a higher vantage point. So those are the, the two aspects of getting things done. When I did this series in 2013 on getting things done, it really just focused on how, how can I make my life not such a shit show? Right. In yeah. this respect, in the in the organizational respect, because, I mean, I was I was getting things done. I was happy with the work I was doing, but I was disorganized in a way, just just trying to do a level of knowledge work, multifaceted knowledge work that teaching and schooling certainly didn't prepare me for just how yeah. many different things I had coming at me at once. And plus, when you're when you're public and other people are throwing things at you and you have really, really smart friends like Wes Bertrand or Richard Grove, whose minds seem like they have the ability to store more than my feeble mind <laughs> does, you know, and they say, watch this, do this. And, and they've got, you know, RAM for all that stuff, but, but I don't. Um, I would have conversations with those guys sometimes and feel overwhelmed by all of the suggestions because all, I, I had no catch for them. I had no capture, uh, no way to collect them and make them meaningful or actionable in my life. I wound up just kind of swatting them away, which I didn't like to do because I mean, suggestions from guys like those, those are usually probably pretty high value suggestions, you know? Yeah. I think I, I think I do that because it's like, man, I have so much stuff on my plate. I mean, I'll, I'll get to that later and then I just forget about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that still happens to me. There's just some things where I say, I can't give any of my attention to this, but I usually, by now, I think I know that I'm not missing out on anything by not directing my attention or focus uh, or effort or time or money to that thing. So, yeah. um, but, but that was, th those determinations come from having some perspective and I'm still like relatively low here. You know, I mean, I have one to two year goals and I'm really just kind of trying to clarify areas of responsibility and decide how knowing what they are um, works in this larger system. But I mean, I want to get to this top altitude where I have a really clear idea of what I'm here to do, what will produce the greatest happiness and fulfillment in my life and how the things I'm doing can contribute to that. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. I think, I think that's what I was looking to do. I think, you know, last week we talked about me and all my goals and I have them in my head. It's weird. Like I know where I want to be. And then for me, it's just like not giving up on it. And like sometimes I think too is I'm really patient. So I'll like sometimes I'll I'll take a look at things, but it's better. Like I, I think sometimes I'll look back on things and it I think more so when I just redid the podcast and moved everything over to podcast blast off. And I'd listen to like I'd start listening to certain old episodes just to um, just to kind of see if I wanted to keep it or not and like actively put it out there for people to listen to. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but then it would kind of like take me back to like all these memories and all this stuff that I'd forgotten about, which I think, you know, the advantage of having Evernote and having a place where you can store your completed tasks and everything else like that is it's easier to kind of, you know, look back at yourself and really look at like maybe, you know, w through the lens of, man, like I really have accomplished a lot. Like, I know I feel like I'm spinning my tires right now because I'm not where exactly where I want to be, but I can still get stuff done. Like, I can still I can still see that I've still made vast improvements or I've still gotten a lot accomplished. When you look at a tool like Evernote and like what I want to get out of it is just being able to be more effective. But at the same time, having something that I can look back and like really kind of 
look at myself and say, you know, great job, man. Look what all you've done. So if I am feeling down or I'm not, I am feeling kind of like, you know, why am I doing this? Why, you know, what's the point of this? You know, am I really even doing anything? You know, so maybe I'm just having an off day. I can look and say, yeah, this is all the stuff you've done. Exactly. Now shut up and get back to work. That was a huge, yeah, that was a huge advantage. Um, even just keeping that record of things done and being able to build these library. So things done was, you know, this giant collection of stuff here. And then uh, starting to build this library of, you know, topics that I could, I could quickly revisit, uh, and reference, you know, in future shows. That was really, that was really rewarding. And it's kind of, uh, for me, it's had a similar effect uh, as keeping a journal, but yeah. it's easier to get right to why I opened the journal. Like, what was I looking for? Why am I going back and sifting through this journal? Um, it might take me a while to find it unless I remember, say, the exact date that it happened. Uh, but with this, you know, everything in Evernote is easily searchable. And the search feature is, is great as kind of a fail safe. But it's pretty easy to find most things in here based on you know, the, this notebook structure. And I think it will get even easier if I start using the tag structure, uh, more regularly, but for basic setup, uh, I say, you know, start an inbox. Well, first, the first thing that I would recommend people do is go to this website. It's called the secret weapon. And there's just three videos they lay out there. You know, what's the problem? What's the approach? How does it work? Uh, and you can see how Evernote and GTD work together. Maybe learn some of the basics of, of getting things done, really the five steps that I went through today. Uh, read a little bit about each one. All of that information is uh, available online for free. This is a massively popular productivity system. And um, then start customizing Evernote for you. You will definitely need an inbox. Uh, you'll need a way to organize your projects. You will need a way to... Uh, write out next actions, which could be done within projects or or separately as as to-do lists, even though by the end of the, of the month, I might have a new attitude about to-do lists. And, you know, a way to capture stuff you might need for later, like a reference or, or someday maybe. And mine basically expanded from there. And it changed several times along the way. But based on everything that I've learned in the last two and a half years or so of using this program... This is what works for me. There is probably a simpler system that would work for many others. And then I can imagine people who do like real knowledge work, you know, like in software or something like that, having a, a vastly more complex system. Well, I uh, I feel a lot better. Any I final questions? Excited. No, I'll probably bug you along the way, like when I'm doing it or if I do have questions. It's like uh, I feel like I have a good outline. And I don't feel like I have questions now, but I'll probably have some questions in the future. But the nice thing is, is that we recorded this show so I can always come back and use it as a reference. Absolutely. Can you give your website just for the people who are watching this and or listening to this and yes. want to learn more about you? People, if you want to hang out with me, listen to my podcast, you can go to samplehour.com or the samplehour.com. Feel free to friend me on Facebook. Just say that you heard me on School Sucks. One of the coolest people I like, I interact with on Facebook. I met through when you posted my show on your feed with the first time that we talked, and you told your story about being a teacher. So my buddy Josh in Illinois, he's a he's a home setter, and in the the whole ag thing as well. So cool. And uh, yeah, I encourage you to uh, you know reach out when you need help. Maybe we could spend a few minutes after each mastermind just uh, getting updates and, and answering questions in in the near future. But uh, I'm excited to hear how this works for you, and um, I hope it not only makes you more productive, but also makes you more serene, which is the way to be, if you ask me. Absolutely, I hope I get the same thing out of it. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please help us out by leaving a positive review on iTunes. If you were angered by the show, please help us out by leaving negative reviews everywhere. If you think this is an important message for students, for parents, or for the future of intellectual freedom, please consider supporting us. SchoolSucksProject.com slash AV. For $6 a month, you'll get access to hundreds of additional hours of content while helping us grow and spread this message further.